For anyone who thinks they might benefit from a brief overview or review of the technical theory behind modulation, this clip will be a basic primer on the terminology and design of mod effects. Those who are already well versed in LFOs, rate and depth settings, and concepts like comb filtering and the Haas effect might want to just skip ahead to the next video, or I'll start going through the plugins themselves. Otherwise, here goes. The term modulation can be applied to a number of processes in audio, as anyone who's worked with synthesizers knows. But in this context, it primarily refers to the periodic variation of a particular aspect of a sound. The periodic variation is usually created by a subsonic oscillator, known as an LFO, a low-frequency oscillator, which is used to alter the particular parameter to be modulated. For delay-based mod effects, this is usually the delay time. A delay-based mod plugin creates its effect by duplicating the original signal, delaying the copy slightly, and then combining the delayed copy and the original, usually in more or less equal amounts. This is similar to what happens when two musicians or two singers perform the same part together. Since human timing is imperfect, the slight timing and pitch variations between the two performances create a thicker, richer sound. This is doubling, and if the timing variations are slightly inconsistent, the effect is even more pronounced and is known as chorusing. This rich effect is simulated electronically by using the delayed copy of a signal to simulate the second doubled performance. This most basic delay effect is called doubling, or ADT, artificial double tracking. A short delay of around 15 to 25 milliseconds is applied to the duplicate version of the signal to emulate the typical natural timing difference between performers. Of course, much longer delays, from 50 milliseconds up to a couple hundred milliseconds, will sound like an echo. But at delay times below 30 milliseconds or so, the psychoacoustic phenomenon called the Haas effect kicks in. At these very short delay times, human hearing doesn't perceive the individual signals as separate entities. Our ears and brain fuse the original and delayed signals into one sound. But since the waves of the two signals don't line up, there'll be interference, which will affect all the harmonics and overtones of typical complex musical signals. The result will be cancellations and reinforcements of those various harmonics and overtones, based on their specific frequencies and the specific delay time involved. This alters the balance of harmonics and overtones when the original and delayed signals are combined, again, with the greatest effect when they're at more or less equal levels. Since the tone, or timbre, of any sound is determined by the balance of harmonics and overtones, the combined signal that we perceive will have its natural tone altered by the interference caused by the delayed signal. The effect, the resulting tonal change, is referred to as comb filtering. A subtle degree of this is a natural component of most sounds we hear, especially in enclosed spaces, where delayed reflections combine with the direct sound from an instrument or voice. It's also what happens when two players or singers perform the same part in unison with the natural imperfections of human timing. Electronic doubling may simulate this, creating the illusion of two or more performances, but it doesn't necessarily add a lot of extra richness. That's where modulation comes in. If the delay time is varied, then so is the resulting tonal variation from comb filtering. Each different delay time creates a subtly but distinctly different tonal alteration. When the delay time changes, the altered tone shifts gradually between these variations, producing a rich, shifting tone, and the simple doubling effect becomes chorusing. The most common way to create this variation is by applying a subsonic oscillator to periodically alter the delay time. As I said, this is called an LFO, low frequency oscillator. The LFO runs at frequencies below the range of human hearing, 
below 20 Hz, and it's not sent to the audio output, but into the delay circuit. So we don't hear it directly, we hear its effect on the delay time as it cycles, periodically increasing and decreasing the delay time above and below whatever basic value it was set to. This results in a periodically shifting tone from the periodically changing comb filtering effect of the varying modulated delay times. And the result is the classic chorusing effect we all know and love that shifting, sometimes swirling texture that adds a highly desirable richness to just about any musical signal. The frequency of the LFO is set with a control that's usually labeled rate or speed, and the strength of the effect, how wide the variation in delay times, and so how strong the effect, is set by a control usually labeled depth, amount, or intensity. Obviously, there are many variations of this technique, and the results can range from very subtle thickening and enhancement to over-the-top whooshing effects. Multiple delay taps can be combined for greater depth. Typical chorusing uses modulated delay times of around 15 to 25 milliseconds. Very short modulated delays of only a few milliseconds produce a sharper comb filtering effect and, combined with feedback, create the more dramatic, often metallic sweeping known as flanging. Sometimes, the timing difference between signals is not implemented by a delay based in milliseconds, but by a timing variation based on the relative position of the cycles of two waves, referred to as a difference in phase. Like flanging, modulating phase produces very short timing differences, but the resulting tonal variation from periodic modulation is softer, more of a gentle whoosh than a metallic ring. We'll see all of this as I go through the various mod plugins. Sometimes, modulation is applied directly to the main signal instead of to a delayed copy. If an LFO is set to control the amplitude of a signal directly, then its periodic cycling will create amplitude modulation, what musicians know as tremolo. Some devices combine these various ways of generating modulation effects for an even richer sound, like the famous Leslie rotating speaker cabinet included here in Logic's collection. I'll get into more detail on the various ways modulation is implemented as I go through all of the relevant plugins. Finally, if an LFO is run at frequencies above 20 Hz, then the periodic modulation it produces will be too fast to be perceived as a periodic change in tone. Instead, it'll effectively create a new overtone structure for the final modulated signal, one that typically takes on a clangorous metallic quality. This is the territory of special effects, and Logic's ring shifter does a great job of providing these more creative options. Again, I'll be getting into more detail as I go through the various plugins. So, with this brief primer out of the way, let's jump into the plugins themselves, starting with Logic's most classic mod effects, Chorus and Ensemble. 